All right, today we're going to read about PXE, which stands for the Pre-Boot Execution Environment. And we're going to use this searchnetworking.techtarget.com as a resource. But first, some basics. This is often pronounced as PIXI. It's a specification that describes a standardized client-server environment. So our first question here is, what is the PIXI specification standardizing? So basically what this is doing is it's boot booting a software assembly, which is retrieved from a network. It's booting that on all Pixie enabled clients. Now on the client side, it only requires a Pixie capable network interface controller. So a special kind of network interface card that is Pixie capable. Now they say here the concept behind Pixie originated in the early days of protocols like boot P, DHCP is sort of from the early days, a TFTP is as well. And as of 2015, it formed or was part of the UEFI standard. So perhaps a good question would be like, what is just a part of the UE uh, firmware interface? I, I really want to memorize the two words in this particular acronym, just because as you're about to see, we'll get more into this whole concept of uh, Pixie being inside of firmware, but let's remember here that Pixie is a part of another standard, the UEFI one. Now in modern data centers, Pixie is the most frequent choice. And what is it being chosen to do? Well, booting operating systems, installing them and deploying them. So my question is, what are three things Pixie can do? Now this goes back to the idea that client systems need to boot appropriate software images with appropriate configurations and they need to do both of these things at boot time. Where is the images and configurations coming from? Well, one or more network servers. Now there is some interesting history here to get into in another video, but let's jump back to our source here on the search networking site. So Margaret Rouse tells us as, that this is an industry standard, which allows networked computers that are not yet loaded with an operating system to be configured and booted remotely by an administrator. So it looks like this is a nice thing for sysadmins or a convenient thing for sysadmins to use. Now the Pixie code is typically delivered with a new computer on a read-only memory chip or boot disk that allows the computer, which is a client in this case, to communicate with the network server so that the client machine can be remotely configured and its operating system can be remotely booted. So nice simple question, where is the Pixie code stored? And that is on a ROM chip. At this time, Margaret Rouse tells us there's three things Pixie is doing. The first thing is the concept of DHCP. That's what Pixie is doing. So this client now gets an IP address. You need one of those to gain access to network servers. The second thing Pixie is doing is delivering a set of APIs that is used by the client's BIOS or a downloaded NBP, which is a network bootstrap program. These APIs are either used by the BIOS or NB NBP to automate the booting of the operating system in uh, other configuration steps. So we had just actually covered that, but now we're connecting that job to the concept of using an API to get the job done. And our third thing here is it creates a standard method of initializing the Pixie code in the Pixie ROM chip or boot disk. So that's a weird third step. Pixie is creating a way for Pixie code to load from one of these two sources. All right, well, this Pixie process consists of the client notifying the server that it uses Pixie. And if the server uses Pixie, it sends a client a list of boot servers that contain the operating systems available. Then the client finds the boot server it needs and receives the name of the file to download. Now the client then downloads the file using TFTP and the client executes it, which loads the operating system. So this is a really interesting standard or way of doing things. Um, my question is, how does a Pixie client get the image for the operating system it needs? And the way it does that is it uses this TFTP protocol. So here's our second example of an already established protocol being used by this specification to get a machine up and running. If a client is equipped with Pixie and the server is not, the server ignores the Pixie code, preventing disruption in the THCP and the bootstrap protocol um, operations. So a question to be answered at another time would simply be like, how does this bootstrap protocol work? 
Well, that's it for this video. I really just wanted to cover how Pixie works. Um, you can read the advantages here. Maybe I'll cover that in another episode when I go over some of the Pixie history here because it's interesting. But here we have seven solid questions for you to ask yourself in order to test yourself to see if you're understanding how Pixie works.